Welcome to the Soul Science Nutrition Podcast, where you'll discover that when it comes to your health, you're so much more powerful than you've been led to believe. And now, your host. She's a holistic nutrition and lifestyle coach, chef, author, and yogi, Christine Ocasey. Hello, and welcome to Soul Science Nutrition. I'm Christine Ocasey. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I am so excited for today's episode. We are talking with Dr. Amit Agarwal, an internationally recognized naturopathic doctor, psychotherapist, whose best-selling book, Heal Your Body, Cure Your Mind, and online courses have helped thousands of people around the world heal their mind and body together with emotional release techniques and holistic medicine. Dr. Amit teaches us to heal the liver, the gut, and the adrenals on the physical level, combined with a psychological toolkit of modalities to heal our mind and our soul, makes him one of the most recognized naturopaths to follow. We'll be talking to Dr. Amit from his hometown in Kenya, where he returned back home after completing his studies in naturopathic medicine in Canada. In addition to lecturing around the world and running his private practice in Kenya, Dr. Amit started Feme Africa, a beautiful organization that brings holistic medicine and homeopathy to remote communities to help improve people's lives. You are not going to want to miss today's conversation with Dr. Amit as he shares his holistic strategies for healing our bodies by helping people overcome negative beliefs and release past stressful negative emotional experiences. Okay, so hello, Dr. Amit. Thank you so much for being here today on Soul Science Nutrition. Thank you as well. Thank you as well. Greetings from Kenya, everyone. Amazing. So how are things in Kenya right now? Good. I mean, we're opening up the country a bit prematurely. However, there is a bit of an economic crisis, I think, they're concerned about. Yes. Um, I figure our peak is going to be in August. We're all just bracing ourselves and doing the best we can, really. Yeah. Yeah. We're all in the same boat trying to figure this brave new world out, aren't we? You know, lots of opportunities to practice, um, you know, dealing with uncertainty, working on our nervous system, and certainly keeping health in the forefront of our mind these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the time really to look inward and see what unconscious stresses we need to face and, I guess, address and let mm -hmm. go from our system. And also take the time to really find out what type of foods nourish our body in the right way. Um, because there's a lot of emotional eating going on at this time, out of boredom, yes. out of stress, out of um, nothing to distract us. Um, so these are all the things that we need to look at during this time, especially. And we need tools. And one of the things that I love about your work is you have such a deep tool bag to give folks um, to help them navigate the, the stressors, the conscious ones and the unconscious ones. So I want to dive in. Your book, Heal Your Body, Cure Your Mind, is absolutely amazing. So, And one of the things that caught my attention, I love how you sum up this powerful role that food choice plays. You say, it's quite simple, really. Nutrition affects hormones and hormones affect emotions. Can you break that down for us? So you have, you have a gut. Yeah, you have a stomach and an intestine and your, your gut has a nice lining kept healthy by good bacteria and good food. And over time with antibiotic use and a poor diet, especially gluten or dairy or things that you might be sensitive to, um, these things kill off the good bacteria and damage your gut lining. And when your gut lining is damaged, you get holes in your intestine and toxins leak into your bloodstream and that causes an inflammatory response all over your body. It's called leaky gut syndrome and chronic inflammation. And with chronic inflammation, um, everything goes wrong in your body, right? You get aches and pains with arthritis, you get eczema, skin breakouts. And also, all your, all your organs are affected, your adrenal glands, your liver, your thyroid, and all these organs affect your hormones. Mm. Now, your liver is the master controller of most functions in your body. And in Chinese medicine, it's the master organ. And it also is the master controller of your hormones. And so with chronic inflammation and toxicity from either medications, from too much alcohol, from environmental toxins, from the skin lotions we put on our cream, uh, the lotions we put on our skin, etc., our liver becomes really toxic. 
Yeah. So there's external toxins as well as internal toxins from inflammation. From mm-hmm. the death. All these really ca- uh, smash the liver and cause or create what we call liver chi stagnation. Chi mm-hmm. means energy. And with liver chi stagnation, then we get into more hormonal imbalance. Usually it's a progesterone deficiency or an estrogen excess, you know, lack of proper conversion of testosterone and thyroid hormones and things like that happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you go into hormonal imbalance. You also produce less bile when, you, when your liver is stagnant. With less bile being released in your intestine, you get more gas, bloating, constipation, indigestion. So constipation is a, a bile issue, not a laxative issue. People make a mistake of being laxative to constipation. No. Yes. Bile and yes. liver relief. Yes. So this whole thing, when you get a hormonal imbalance, then your hormones affect your mood in many ways. So low mm-hmm. testosterone creates depression, for example. Progesterone is very important for your brain chemical called GABA to work well in your brain. And GABA is this neurotransmitter that reduces anxiety. So if... If your progesterone is low, GABA doesn't work well in your brain, so you're more prone to anxiety and insomnia. Mm-hmm. And I talk about this in my online course as well, is basically why people with PMS symptoms, breast tenderness, etc., and any really chronic health conditions, they really need to treat their liver to alleviate the PMS as well as the anxiety and insomnia and gas and bloating and breast tenderness, tenderness that comes with it. Um, the chronic inflammation that's ensuing from leaky gut as well as a toxic liver then stresses your adrenal glands. Yeah, it tells your adrenal glands to make cortisol. Mm-hmm. Because cortisol is needed to manage inflammation. Now, your adrenal glands are already wiped out from either present day stress, your, your divorces, your bills, your financial restraints, going to work, cell phones ringing, late nights you know, alarm clocks in the middle of the room, in the middle of the night, all these lights going on. So your adrenal glands are on the verge of burnout. And then they have the added stress of dealing with inflammation. So you're going into adrenal burnout much faster. Hmm. And when your adrenal glands burn out, basically your cortisol levels then go out of balance. And when your cortisol levels are out of balance, your hormones go out of balance, and serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, and GABA, all your brain chemicals start dropping as well. Yeah. Yes, and you get yes. thyroid dysfunction. Your thyroid hormones are not converted well. Your T4 doesn't get converted to T3 very well. Yes. And the combination of all of these will cause anxiety, depression, insomnia, OCD, paranoia, the whole spectrum of mental health that is mm-hmm. given different labels and different diagnoses. But really, it's, it's a whole spectrum of neurotransmitter imbalances that mm-hmm. are really easy to treat when you treat the root cause, which is basically healing your gut, your liver, supporting your adrenal system, and of course, releasing emotional stress, which we'll talk about, you know, how mm-hmm. stress is stored in the limbic brain and stuff like that. Right. Yes. It's amazing because um, when we're talking about emotional difficulty, you know, and mm-hmm. I like that term that you use, you know, whether that's anxiety or depression or just a low, you know, imbalanced mood function. So many folks um, know that they should eat better to try to fix that, but you really mm-hmm. break down why. It, it's, talk, it's all about organ function. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, it really is supplying the essential components to maintain a healthy balance at the organ system level. And uh, we, we don't think about our liver when we're depressed or feeling anxious. Right? We're always focused on the brain. Mm-hmm. So the work that you do at, in your practice is really diving um, deep and giving meaning to this interconnection that's happening. When it comes to our food, our hormones, our mood, and our physiology. So now let's talk about the emotional stressors, which you said need to be released as part of this work. So in addition to balancing what's going on in our organ system, we need to understand there's some uh, emotional toxins or stressors that we need tools to release as well. So describe your process for working at this root cause when it comes to the releasing of the emotional stress. Okay. So I'm a naturopath as well as a psychotherapist. Yeah. So I combine gestalt psychotherapy, EMDR, family constellation. So when somebody walks in with stress issues, Mm -hmm. right, um, there's obviously an emotional component to their suffering as well as maybe a physical component. But 99% of the people in the world have some sort of 
emotional stress from their past, from their childhood that has not been resolved. Okay. Um, some people call it trauma. Um, other people are calling it adverse childhood experiences. So this is either feeling neglected or being abandoned or seeing your parents fighting or divorcing, being abused, yeah, or being around a lot of drugs and things like that. These are all things that, that really stress the nervous system of a young child. Mm. And so these traumas and this information is stored in the limbic system. And other people are, are recognizing that it's actually stored in the water molecules in our body, actually. Okay. And that's why homeopathy, which uh, we'll talk about, which I use a lot for healing stress and trauma. Yes. is very useful for healing um, yeah, unresolved trauma as well. Uh, because homeopathy works in the water molecules of, of your system. Wow. So anyways, these things linger, the, all these traumas, adverse childhood experiences, they linger. And these are all unconscious, Dr. Jeremy? These are below our awareness? Good question, yes. So some people don't realize they have them. So they okay. are unconscious or subconscious. Okay. Some people are aware that, um, especially if you've done a lot of reading and stuff like that and been through therapy, you know that you went through some difficult experiences in life. Sure. And as an adult or a teenager, you know, if you're bullied or you went through sexual abuse or physical abuse or any violent experience, um, those external traumas, you know, you have them. Right. Yeah? right. They will change your mood and your perception and different things. Yes. And the key thing is reintegrating your original self back to you, your heart, so you can live authentically without fear, without stigmatism, um, mm. without self-doubt, yeah? without self-sabotaging. Yes. And these are all possible when you go through the right steps of therapy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is, and the online course also helps you, is work through these different layers of stress and trauma. So you peel away layer by layer and you, you really reintegrate your, your soft heart, your beautiful self mm -hmm. and your confident self and your self-love. Because we give up these things as a way to escape from the pain of trauma. Mm -hmm. yeah? so trauma mm -hmm. is not necessarily... And Gabriel Mate says this, and I love the way he says it. Trauma is not necessarily what happens to you. It's, it's how you react to an experience is actually the trauma. Because the way you react is escapism, is, is avoiding your authentic nature, your carefree spontane spontaneity. Yes. And that compensation is trauma. Yes. Because then you become dull. You become sad inside. Because you don't want to feel you know, the, the confident part of you because that might get hurt again. Yeah. or you don't feel safe enough to be you. Mm -hmm. That's living traumatized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. the, and the effects that linger, as you said, you know, um, manifest in physical symptom. Physical and emotional, yes. So, mm -hmm. for example, like people will go into anxiety, depression, etc. And the root mm -hmm. cause is either a neurotransmitter imbalance and a brain chemical imbalance caused by inflammation, toxicity, hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. And as well, a combination of emotional stresses as well from childhood, mm -hmm. yeah? Attacking the nervous system, yeah? Sabotaging the self-belief and the self-confidence, yeah? So combination of external emotional trauma mm -hmm. and also not being loved as a child and all these things, mm -hmm. plus all the foods and the toxins we put in our body, all these things will mess up our brain chemicals, right? So right. of course, we're not going to feel good. Of course, we'll be more susceptible to... Um, attacks from other people or low self-esteem issues or self-doubt or crashing fatigue, chronic fatigue, sadness, PMS symptoms. Everything yes. goes wrong yeah, when we don't have the right support. And the yes. right support is, of course, good emotional nourishing, good counseling, good therapies, as well as good food and nutrition. Yes, the full spectrum of nourishment for all aspects of our health. Please share with us now the uh, nature of homeopathy and what that involves in your work. So homeopathy is this beautiful form of medicine developed by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann from Germany a long time ago. And I can't remember the years. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he, he dilutes substances multiple times um, so that there's no final molecule left in the final solution, but the water molecules are altered in a way that it's actually, they have a frequency now that matches the disease state of a person. So now we're treating people at a frequency level. And yeah. that's why homeopathy is so effective in really altering the person's physiology and emotions at the same time. So their entire frequency changes. 
And when you change the vibration of a person and the physical starts changing very fast. Yes. And why homeopathy works very well is because we look at the unique symptoms of a person. You know, somebody with asthma, are they waking up at night or is their asthma worse in the evenings? Do they prefer cold water or hot water? All these are unique symptoms for mm -hmm. which we choose a very unique remedy. Mm -hmm. And that's why it goes deeper. And I use homeopathy a lot. And the online course also teaches the remedies for treating trauma from the past. You can actually use homeopathy to address abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, parents fighting, whatever, arguments, violence, shame, guilt, okay. all these things that happened to you as a child using the right medicine. It doesn't suppress anything. It helps to release the energetic bonds and the blockages that are related to that traumatic experience. Wow, that's amazing. So homeopathic medicine is a specific and personalized remedy, first of all, working at the energetic level of our past and childhood traumas. They, it matches the frequency of the suppressed emotions, which basically releases the blockages that are at the root of our health challenges, right? It is a definitely a form of release and mm -hmm. what I would say reintegration. You know, some, the language, the common language is to release trauma. And mm -hmm. what we're finding out as trauma therapists is really to reintegrate missing yes. parts, escaping parts of, this, of the psyche okay. in a safe way. That's a really important piece because if we have a story, right, as you mm -hmm. said, you know, the, the way that we responded to a traumatic experience or a difficult experience, in fact, that story has kept us safe for a period of time. Like we needed that story, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of practices traditionally that say, well, we need to get rid of our story. We need to just let go of our story. Yeah, I mean, there's just something about that approach that feels like a form of bypassing or actually creating even more internal division within ourselves, which is obviously not what we're going for. That's why I think the reintegration component is actually much more healing and it's actually much more loving and compassionate in terms of how we're working with a person who is struggling, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's more, it's humanistic. It's more humanistic. I think. Yes. Yeah, because yes. there's a lot of pressure on people to forget their trauma or get over things or think positive. But the body yes. remembers everything, right? And if you ignore the body, the body memory and the body sensations when you're healing trauma, it just becomes talk therapy and it's not effective. You know, I get lots of clients coming to me saying, we've been through talk therapy. You know, this is very different. I'm feeling my body. I'm, I'm shaking stuff off. I'm reintegrating like really vulnerable parts of myself, missing parts of myself. And it feels so much better. Yes. You know, I'm getting so much further with this type of therapy rather than just conventional talk therapy. Mm -hmm. Because it's very because the body freezes, right? The body freezes or or compensates or hides shame, um, hides raw anger. You know, anger, like raw anger is a beautiful way of protecting ourselves and creating boundaries. And we're we're so conditioned to suppress it, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of shame around anger. And we think we're inappropriate or out of society. And we're so afraid of being excluded if we get angry. We're so afraid of being excluded from society that Absolutely. we don't bottle up behavior. And we're perfect. <laughs> and underneath, there's so much boiling rage that goes and turns into fibroids and ulcers and ovarian cysts and things like that, right? Until yes. you really release it through good psychotherapy, somatic experiencing, or homeopathy. It's a genuinely, I say, holistic, W-H-O-L-E, holistic person approach. And mm -hmm. it's what's needed oftentimes is to fill in the gaps where talk therapy exclusively, you know, can't do nutritional therapy exclusively. They all have their own gifts. But until we have that integration um, because of the, our, our symptom and our dysfunction, if you will, has all those components, right? It has all those pathways in. It's such a beautiful um, skill set that you offer to your patients and your clients. I know that you have um, expertise in something called family constellations therapy. In your book, you talk about the healing power of forgiveness when it comes to using family constellations therapy. Can you give us some examples of that? Because I, I have a lot of clients who understand on the cognitive level, well, it was, you know, I was emotionally abused by my mother and my father was, you know, struggling with alcoholism and everything. And I, 
but the whole idea of making peace with that is a new, um, you, you bring a new depth to it using this tool. Can you talk about that? Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm just tuning into the energy of it. Yeah. So Family Constellations is a beautiful exploding form of therapy all over the world right now where it really corrects imbalances in the family system. It heals transgenerational trauma, so trauma that happened to your ancestors or even trauma that you don't know about that happened in your family system and that out of loyalty, your children or siblings are caring for your mother, your father, your grandparents without realizing we're doing it. Yeah? Yes, yes. Because we're, we're born into a traumatized system so as, as soul beings, as sensitive babies, we pick up on these things and we adjust our natural expression to belong to the traumatized system because that's our identity of love. You know, that's mm. our source of love is the traumatized system. So we have to fit in there. So mm. we uh, adjust our, our, our way. And of course, that leads to chronic health conditions, emotional problems as adults. And, and Family Constellations offers a beautiful way to really un unentangle or disentangle ourselves from the traumatized system so that we can we can receive healthier energy for ourselves and live life without feeling that we're betraying our own families, even if we don't follow their traumatized life path. Mm -hmm. And um, forgiveness, um, I learned a very beautiful sentence for forgiveness. So rather than saying, I forgive you, which maintains that dominance, like you're the perpetrator, I'm the victim kind of thing, yeah, in that sentence, I forgive you, still makes the person wrong. Yes. I learned a beautiful sentence, which um, I write about in the book, is, I am sorry this happened between you and I. Yeah. 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 I'm deeply sorry that I was affected by your misbehavior. Mm. It doesn't work for every sort of assault. Like, mm -hmm. I use different sentences with my clients for different sort of assaults. Like, mm -hmm. for sexual abuse, sometimes I say... You know, um, I take my, my body and I give you back your sexuality and distorted intentions. Mm. Wow. Yeah? That's a very it's powerful power. thing. So sense. powerful. Right. Mm. And that works really well to heal the nervous system and bring people out of that traumatized, victimized experience of life. Yeah. It interrupts the, the, the narrative that might have been playing for a very long time, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. These That's beautiful. Really change the narrative for us, which, and when you change the narrative, you get in touch with your heart, your vulnerability, the true self, yeah, the hurt self or the loving self, the self accepting self. Mm -hmm. And then naturally, when you heal the heart, then the narrative reduces and stops. Mm. Wow. And then you start looking at more positive things in life. You start becoming happy. You start connecting with people uh, much more trustingly or with more love. And so when you do that, you receive more love as well. So you get into better relationships, your life becomes better, and you just grow more spiritually, right? I love that. Yeah, it, it really is um, such a, a deep healing that can take place from, as you mentioned, from the heart and from the um, energetic soul level, which is, again, where the deepest healing occurs, as, as you know. I love that. Now, that phrase is just one of so many powerful um, tools in your book. One of them is for dealing with resistance. So you're in the same space when we see our clients struggling with taking care of themselves. They know what to do. They know all this great information and knowledge, you know, how to eat better, how to move better and everything, but they have a resistance to it. And they even recognize this resistance. And you talk about in your book, one of the most common um, and difficult hurdles to overcome is giving ourselves permission to heal, giving mm -hmm. ourselves permission to be okay, um, to feel worthy enough to have a healthy body, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you have a tool for this. It's again, another beautiful system of phrases. Can, can you please share with our listeners what that is? Because it really landed for me. <laughs> yeah so so i think i channeled this one it just came to me through meditation mm. it's safe to feel hurt from time to time mm. it's and it's safe to be forgiving once in a while 
and it's safe to relax from time to time. Mm. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm giving permission myself to feel a whole spectrum of positive and negative or stressful emotions from mm-hmm. time to time. So I use the words from time to time on purpose. Um, because from time to time gives the psyche, the ego and the subconscious and the heart permission to to feel both yes and the absence of those feelings. Rather than stress yourself to feel positive and say it's safe to feel good, it's safe to feel fantastic. There's a part of you that's always in resistance to that because like, hell no, I don't want to feel that way. I'm going to get hurt again, right? Yes. And, for, and if you try exactly. it out right now, listeners who are listening, and yeah. you add the word from time to time, your body goes into relaxation. Yes. You're like, okay, I don't have to should myself into getting better or feeling good and great. It's like, it's available to me. And when something's available, it becomes choice. And when something's out of choice rather than pressure, boom, transformation just multiplies and you feel yeah. and everything becomes organic. And <laughs> <laughs> Easy flow, right? Exactly. The way things are supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. in their natural rather, state. Exactly. Rather than the pressures of shoulds. I should feel that way. I should be positive. I should... I should feel better. Shoulds is a very damaging, damaging narrative that we're it fed is. by 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 therapists, even or or personal growth teachers. Right? Is we have to be careful. I mean, they're lovely people. They mean well. It's just yes. we have to be careful with the language we're using for our own self healing. So I think gentleness and permission to heal is more effective than force. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's huge because it can come from external folks who are trying to help us. But even our own narrative is, we're sh- I say we're shooting all over ourselves all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh God, I shouldn't have eaten that. Oh, I, 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 I have to exercise today no matter what, you know? All you're doing is telling your subconscious mind you'd rather be doing something else. <laughs> that's really kind of the implicit narrative there is like, well, I, I should eat that but I really don't want to. And, and the word, you see, we use should in a tricky way, as a, trick, as a tricky manipulation. Manipulation. Because the word should, I should be doing this, gives you a false sense of achievement and progress. If mm. I'm shooting myself, it means I'm behaving well and I'm doing something about it. Mm. And yet there's no action that takes place. It's just the language of should. And nothing really happens at the end of the day. Yes. And you feel like I've shooting myself enough so there's less guilt because... I, at least I should it myself to do it. Yes, exactly. Thank you. I actually want to take a step back now and have you share some of the beautiful work that you do to help clients resolve and release themselves from, once again, either emotional trauma or um, stuck patterns of behavior that are impacting our health that go way beyond our immediate awareness, that actually go so much deeper into our lineage, our ancestry, and even across generations. Can you just describe that process for us and how that works? So we live in a field of knowledge, a knowing field of information, of vibration. And um, this field is, is going on from time immemorial, and we're born into this field. And this field has information about all the traumas that have taken place, of all the imbalances, of all the good things, the betrayals, the abandonments. And people are living these feelings, right? Um, so your mom, if she was abandoned by her father, traumatized by her father, it's in her cells. And um, when you're born to your mother, you, you're born of a traumatized person. And so you latch on to her behaviors, her, her, her moods. Yeah, it's, it becomes a norm. And you don't realize it's, it's, it's not necessarily the healthiest way. It's just the norm. Mm-hmm. So you're born to the system, her way of being. In the same way your mom was born into her father's way of being. And yeah. her father was born into their ancestors' way of being. So you're born into a generation of behaviors, of beliefs of expectations of really it's energy it's energetic intentions Mm. yeah that stem from experiences long time ago that we don't realize are being continued yeah that we're continuing based on our uh, predecessor or ancestors behaviors Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so these tendencies then can lead to you know not loving yourself or having belief systems that is not good to think about 
money or self love or yes. going to diabetes because you cannot receive good nourishment yes and so ancestral trauma can be healed with family constellations therapy um by saying certain sentences mm. to to the people around you to yourself to your parents um for example i get a lot of women who are in dysfunctional relationships and very painful relationships yeah and often it's a pattern that's in their family system so either their mom or grandma or somebody was with an alcoholic or abusive parent mm. or in a difficult relationship and what becomes apparent in this therapy is that a lot of children now that my client was an adult have a subconscious guilt or loyalty towards their mom saying gosh mom you suffered so much it's not right for me to be happier than you yes. you know i need to be as miserable as you were and so in a way there's a subconscious self esteem sabotage yeah and it's and then it's easier to swallow or take on negative men or negative relationships because it's like the norm for your for the family yes and so you don't know how to escape in it and you don't know why you don't have more self esteem to run away and so they'll go you know they'll spend hours of therapy on working on self esteem working on self esteem yes and it's still stored in the simps system in the okay. limbic system yes and then when you say sentence like dear mom i love you very much even if i'm happier than you were with dad even if i'm joyful in my life i'm not betraying you you i'm not leaving you alone in your suffering you know i'm living my life of happiness you know maybe to make up for your lack of happiness you know i'm doing this for both of us exactly and you have suddenly have the subconscious permission yes. to have joy and better relationships in your mind in your life that you didn't have before yeah yeah another way to give ourselves permission to another to, way to give permission yeah 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 so that's one example of how yeah. family constellations is used Thank Another you. typical example is when there's miscarriages or abortions in the family and we don't recognize those missing children and mm. we we assume we're the first child in the family mm. versus whereas you know there's actually a miscarried or aborted child that came before us okay and if we don't acknowledge our true position our second place or third place in the in the family yeah we live with a lot of unconscious confusion Wow. And suddenly when you realize okay hang on a sec i am actually second in the system so there's less pressure on me to be the first child or to do all the duties and accomplishments that are meant for a first child right i feel a bit more calm in my life like i i can handle things according to my pace in life you know yeah yeah wow that that's amazing yeah you talk a lot about the relationship between emotional resilience and chronic disease and right now obviously in the midst of this global pandemic and people right. recognizing that they need to to get that stress under control they need to really focus on you know working with their um their moods and and their energy um to keep the body healthy right so emotional resilience is the ability to really withstand stress in a way or negative feelings and insults or emotional trauma and um emotional resilience obviously comes from having a healthier background or healthier upbringing and you know if we've been traumatized or compensated or have a lot of adverse childhood experiences as a child then we don't have those resources and we're emotional resources and we're more vulnerable to stress and trauma so we don't feel as resilient you know yes. the wounds go deep we feel more scared of insults or being abandoned because it, you know old trauma gets brought up yeah mom leaving us when we're 2 years old or dad beating mom or shouting and screaming in the house feeling unsafe suddenly that happens when we're facing with with conflict as adults you know all those childhood triggers get get triggered basically all those childhood traumas get triggered and there's a lot of stuff that is ripe for triggering us these days i mean you know watch the news have a conversation you know just mm -hmm. even if we just taking everything in and there's just a huge emotional roller coaster happening right now so what's going huge. on there what's going huge. on there yeah so people are burning out people are burning out they're feeling attacked they're mm -hmm. feeling lost helpless unsafe unsupported, unsafe unsupported yes. yes and so it's a result of basically the present circumstances as well as their childhood beliefs and situations and so 
what happens is when all this stress and all this frenzy goes on in the body, then the adrenal glands are stimulated to make more adrenaline. And when that happens, the adrenal glands get burnt out and you get into a cortisol imbalance. And when that happens, you know, your insulin resistance is affected, your, your water retention goes up, your weight gain goes up, your thyroid crashes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you don't have emotional resilience, you basically collapse physiologically as well. And then that leads to hormonal imbalances and everything else I've talked about, which leads to chronic disease. Wow. Right. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. If your green glands are not pumping well enough and you're, and you're feeling lethargic and all that, your lymph is not flowing. So you're going to retain more toxins. You're going to get more oxidative damage in your tissues. You might be more susceptible to cancers and other chronic diseases as well and weight gain. Yes. Um, so it's very, very, very important to build emotional resilience by healing the childhood wounds, by doing the really deep work, yeah, using the homeopathy, using the gestalt therapy, EMDR, family consolation. Yeah, really immersing yourself into that self-love journey so that you're less affected by external stresses which harm your body or exhaust your body. Thank you. Yeah, that is so, that's awesome. I, I totally get it. I like the way you say, you know, emotional resilience is essential for physiological balance. I mean, yeah. that's the bridge that I think we want people to understand, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, you don't, if you're not emotionally resilient, you're going to get an ulcer from stress. You're going to get a stress ulcer because you're going to overwhelm you. You don't have the resources. You have to manage things and to let go. Yes, thank you. And what we're talking about, I think, is having the right tools to release the unconscious stresses that are wreaking havoc on our physiology. Uh, because these unconscious stresses are literally stressing your adrenal system. Your adrenal system is responding to them. Your nervous system, your water molecules, your entire physiology is actually altered because of what happened to you and these unconscious things that are going on for you. And if you continue this way without resolving them, then you just burn out faster. Mm -hmm. And so when you heal these unconscious stresses and you heal these wounds from childhood and things like that, because most people don't realize that when their mom looked away the other way and ignored them, that that left an emotional wound that feels like, oh, I'm not good enough. And then you live your whole life trying to make up for that feeling of I'm not good enough and really you're actually okay and you don't need to do that much hard work to feel good enough. Yes. Um, So when you heal those wounds, then your adrenal glands relax. And when they relax, they're easier to build up with the adaptogenic herbs, right? The B vitamins and the ashwagandhas and the rhodiolas. Because if you don't heal the wounds and the stresses, then you'll, you'll be taking supplements your whole life without changing the patterns of your physiology. Ah. And so many of us, you know, don't have the, the knowledge or the path to do that. Some people, they're taking supplements. We don't even know if they're working. They don't, they can't discern whether or not they're actually doing the work they're designed to do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, the pain, the pain that I see for myself and for clients is that they have a lot of supplements based on Google research. Yes. And the supplements are addressing symptoms. And they're not healing the foundations of health, which is the liver, the gut, the adrenal system. And of course, then therapy for releasing or yeah, to heal trauma and integrating vulnerability and self-love. Yes, yes. Thank you. What about meditation? So meditation gives space in our, in our minds, in our consciousness to approach the parts of us that either we're avoiding or are avoiding us or we don't want to mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. And so depending on the way you use meditation, meditation can provide really that room for vulnerability, for acceptance, for self-love, for calming the nervous system down so that we're not running away and mm-hmm. avoiding an old memory. We're not running away in fight or flight anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're sitting with the feelings, the emotions, without judging them. And the lack of judgment and the acceptance relaxes the adrenal fight or flight response. Suddenly we don't have to defend ourselves or make excuses for ourselves. And we become more comfortable with our sensations and our personality and all, all everything about us. Yeah. Mm. And that self-acceptance, that calming down really calms down the adrenal system, the fight or flight. So the cortisol levels change. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, It's easier to process old feelings, old disappointments, old abandonments. Yeah, the word disappointment is coming to mind because a lot of 
what people label as trauma is really yeah it's 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 um chronic unresolved disappointment mm. yes either with our siblings with our loved ones with our grandparents parents yes relatives, whatever yeah that's powerful i love that and again it's it's really um always a pathway leading back to that heart space that for one reason or another, as you talk about, gets cut we get cut off from or gets burdened somehow or not not we're not able to to connect with that. So much of you know holistic work is talking about releasing blockages and and obstacles and and all of that I always get the feeling is always right there in that heart space because we all get so caught up in our head. Um, it's quite fascinating, you know, to understand that we have these um these additional capacities, these additional um, powers, really, you know. Actually, to... the powers, the powers for sure. The powers yeah. for sure because they give us intelligence, sensitivity, reading the environment, you mm. know, um, feeling things in your gut. It doesn't feel right, so you know, okay, your gut's talking, right? <laughs> so we're one being, you know. We're not a collection of organs per se. It's like we we kind of belong to the whole organ system. Mm. you know and the whole organ system is detecting it's processing everything together so everything is in synergy with the other yes and synergy. Medicine, you know the spleen affects the heart and the heart affects the liver etc you know you have the whole five element system beautiful and it's so true there is no real separation between body and mind and that's really important to remember if you really want deep deep healing yes. then you need to feel the body and the mind together yeah do you think we're getting there in in terms of modern day medicine just what are you what are you hopeful for this coming through more and more well i think so i mean i have a whole online course that teaches healing the body yes. and the mind together who touches on that um and a lot of people are recognizing the value of releasing or integrating emotions for the sake of resolving you know whatever it may be headaches some people have cancer um, Anita Murjani, for example, the woman who recovered from cancer, she's very famous and she was that Indeed. book, Dying to yes. Be Me. Yes. I believe she had an emotional realization that transformed her physiology. Uh-huh. And I've seen uh-huh. hundreds of patients, you know, um, with stomach problems and headaches and other things that um, when we emote the right emotions or use the right words to emote what's unspoken, Mm. then a spontaneous healing happens because that's just called retroflexion in Gishtal. We call it like a retroflexion, like a, a frenzy, a stuck energy going on in the system that hasn't been expressed. So it, the, the body cells just get tense and they produce too many enzymes or there's a lack of enzymes and there's a breakdown of ATP production or mitochondrial function and then disease sets in, right? Mm. And when we breathe deep and relax and we feel safe and comfortable and confident, then suddenly ATP uh, production works better. Mitochondrial function picks up. You know, the vagus nerve releases the right type of cytokines in the, in the, in the gut. And suddenly your good bacteria are flourishing because the right juices are flowing from your liver. And, you know, and the right cytokines are coming from your vagus nerve. So there's, you know, there's physiologically, there's a lot of evidence um, of how emotions actually create chemical changes in our body. Yes. Acceleration. This is really what we're talking about. We're talking about leveraging what we have to accelerate the process. And in your book, you say the old way of treating your mind and body separately is slow, right? And yeah, and on my website, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it's it's really it captures again the power of having this genuinely holistic approach. So um, you do so much beautiful work um, in your community where you grew up in the um, and. It's so curious to me because when I saw that, I said, wow, okay, so here's this amazing, you know, practitioner and, and, and healer working with a population that is so um, underserved, you know, so mm-hmm. they can't go out and buy expensive drugs and they can't go out and follow the FODMAP diet, you know what I mean, <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> right? Um, right. Tell me about the work that you do and why it is actually so effective, despite the fact that we don't have all the bells and whistles that we think need are needed when it comes to healing the body. Okay. Well, thank you, because you're letting me speak 
about something that's very dear to my heart is the mobile clinics of FIM Africa. So FIM Africa is a charity I started um, in Canada a long time ago to do mobile clinics for poor communities in the north of Kenya. So treating the Samburu, the Maasai communities, Turkanas. And what I do is basically drive around in a Jeep and treat them with homeopathy. Now, a lot of these communities, of course, they have traditions of herbal medicine and those traditions are being forgotten, number one. Mm. Number two, homeopathy is super safe and works very effectively, especially for children. Mm. And so, and a lot of these people have forgotten or gone to Western medicine and, you know, Western medicine, especially the over-prescription of antibiotics and anti-malarials and painkillers are just damaging their system. Wow. And they're loving the homeopathy. They're loving the homeopathy because it's gentle and it's treating the root cause and without damaging the body. Yes. And I'm, and I'm using homeopathy now with children who have been abandoned because of their disabilities. I mean, mm. these poor kids um, are thought of as curses by their community because of their disabilities. Um, so I'm trying homeopathy to help heal either stunted growth or autism or cerebral palsy or, you know, disfigured joints, whatever it may be. I'm just trying my best. Um, and of course, adding nutrition and stuff like that um, because they need extra vitamin D and extra supplements to stimulate their growth. Because, mm. I mean, there's 11-year-old or 12-year-old kids who look like three-year-olds, right? Because they were not fed. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Mm. And so, yeah, just trying my best really, right? And homeopathy works great. Holistic medicine works great. Yeah. And um, we just try our best, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think it's... it's um it's really beautiful that you say what you're doing actually is to also empower the, not just the patients that you're treating, but the communities that you're working with to recognize once again, to maybe rediscover that mm. they don't have to be so dependent on Western medicine practices that mm. I imagine this is also such a beautiful opportunity for them to um, reactivate or actually put more um practice into traditional forms of healing that may, like you said, have been kind of glossed over or lost, you know, um, in the name of progress and all of it. But it gives the power once again back um, to the patient and to the family to know this. It's so beautiful. Yeah, because traditional medicine and Maasai knowledge of herbs is super, super valuable. Yeah. And, you know, Western medicine has kind of squashed it, um, calling it ineffective or witchcraft. Yes. Um, it was squashed. And I think it was a colonial kind of law that came in actually that caused it to become witchcraft. Yeah. So by giving back the power, power back to the communities and to these herbalists and things like that and restoring belief in holistic medicine, also mm. these herbalists then will get their jobs back, right? We'll get a source of income back, yes. get recognition in the community because they're, they're wise elders, right? They're wise elders that are needed. So right. valuable. Mm-hmm. You get information from plants. They download it from ancestors. And this is what's missing in society right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it really is. Um, and again, mm-hmm. just thank you for all the work that you're doing to to rejuvenate and, mm-hmm. and bring that back into, you know, um, just a wider audience because I think it's important. You know, it's affecting change on so many levels, the personal and the community and and eventually the society, you know, to kind of embrace what has been lost in so much of these traditional cultures. It's, it's, I can see that it's, it's where your heart is, and that's what's so great. <laughs> it is, my dear. It is. One day when I sell enough books in my online course, then I'll do it more full time. Yes, and I'm going to do everything I can do to make that happen. <laughs> what are the non-negotiables in your personal self-care kit? Like, what do you do? to de-stress these days. You've got a lot going on, you know, um, in your world. Mm -hmm. What do you, what's non-negotiable? What do you need, know you are doing for yourself that is really Mm -hmm. important? So I do Kundalini yoga in the mornings, which is fantastic. I love Kundalini yoga because it resets the nervous system. It releases trauma from the body. Mm. It increases endorphins and it rebalances your neurotransmitters. And so after Kundalini session, you think clearly you are less depressed, so you make better decisions. And you just feel more emotionally resilient, which, as you know now, is very important for preventing chronic disease. Beautiful. And it also, Kundalini also detoxifies your body and inc- increases oxygen delivery to all your cells. Mm. That's one. Number two, um, I'm a 
therapist, as you know, Gestalt, family constellations, etc. I'm very sensitive. Anyways, I'll I'll tune into my own system and understand, you know, okay, I'm feeling a tension here or a sadness here. What is it about? Is it about an old breakup? Is it about a loyalty that I have with an ex-girlfriend that I promise I'll never leave and it's over and I'm still hanging on? Mm. Yeah, is it am I sabotaging my own happiness and going forward in life because of this old loyalty? Yeah. Yes. Am I angry with my mother for ignoring me when I was trying to prescribe her natural supplements when she was yeah. fighting disease, cancer yeah. and things like that? Mm. And am I still living with that disappointment? Is it unhealed? So I'll scan myself in the mornings and constantly. Sometimes I wish I could turn off the scanner. Now it happens all the time. So I'm, uh, it's mm. like, <laughs> I wish I could just live unaware sometimes and just enjoy myself and have a beer or something like that, right? <laughs> well, I hope you get but, to do that too. <laughs> yeah, so I'm all, I'm, I hope so one day. So I'm always tuning in and scanning and resolving and releasing mm. emotions. Okay. And I find that really important because it helps me be very emotionally clear with my clients as well. Because I can okay. sense when they're sabotaging their own happiness mm-hmm. with belief systems and narratives that are, are not lifting them vibrationally or spiritually or mm-hmm. healing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And, I, and, and there's, always, there's an important distinction to be made, I think, to emphasize your work, that it sounds very contemplative in nature, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not just contemplative in the cognitive sense, it's in the psychological sense. And I think that's, I know when I work with people, that's the reprogramming or the paradigm shift that I'm trying to embody, which Mm -hmm. is that, yes, we call it up in our thinking mind, but we feel into where does it live in the body? How is Mm -hmm. it expressing in the body? There's a somatic component right? That, that has to be part of the reflection. Be part, that's why we need to move also. Um, it, it, we can't just sit on our meditation cushions, you know, for hours on end. It's important to move the body as well because it's this again, integrated system, right? Yes. So I love the way you explain that. You, you hit the nail on the head. Fantastic. You got to yeah. feel in into yeah. the somatic experience of things. Absolutely. Because that's where they first took root, and again, that's why the definition of root cause really is such an important one. I know it's the term that I use, you use, a lot of people use, but root cause is even beyond healing at the cellular level. It goes into the energetic DNA, if you even want to use that word, right? Mm-hmm. But it goes into the subtle body. It goes into, as you said, the, um, the non-physical um, mm-hmm. parts of our, our being, yeah, Absolutely. which again yeah. is why it can be fast and, and, and a lot more accelerated. I love that. So um, this is going to sound like a really don't, daunting question, and I hope it isn't. But what is your ultimate goal, Dr. Amit? My ultimate goal is, is to go to the light and peace. I mean, to finally end this world with a sense of peace. That's mm. the ultimate goal. Yes. And on earth, Thank it you. will be just to be free. To, to love freely, to gift freely, to, to be less stressed financially, whatever. Mm. It's just to, to really love freely and bring yes. a, like open the hearts or awaken the hearts of people around me so that there's more self-love, self-acceptance, and more joy. That's yeah, We need to bring back the joy into this world. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're over serious, you know what I mean? Even in, even yeah. in uh, therapy, we're over serious. <laughs> Agree. We need a commitment, actually, as you said, to to maintain that state of joy, to get out, to get rid of anything that's standing in the way of our joy, especially now. And and that's why I'm asking you this question. And that's why I know your answer was going to be so healing for people to hear right now, because we have to remember that. We have to remember that joy and love and self-love is ultimately what's needed especially in these times it's available to us it's available to us i always avoid using the word need because it's a pressure it's a should yeah yes so it's it's an availability to us so remembering it and and getting guidance to refeel it to trust in it again rather than be guarded and watchful um about how not to let go of our guard you know Mm. that's what's making us sick as well and unhappy so, of course, so please share with us how uh, folks can find you online and also how they yeah. can support the beautiful work in the community that you do. 
Thank you. So I have some free videos on my website, a free course that people can watch to understand how, you know, how we heal the liver, the gut, adrenals, et cetera, and the emotions. Yes. And then when you get my online course and you get lots of copies of my book, then um, it supports the communities that I work with. And if you can get my book to become a New York best time seller or put in the hands of Oprah, if you're listening out there, or I don't know, Michelle <laughs> Obama or anybody who can really explode this thing, then I'll be eternally grateful. Absolutely. <laughs> it is gold. It is gold. Thank you so much, Dr. Meade. It's been such a pleasure and a gift to have this conversation with you. All right. Thank you, my dear. Thank awesome. You. <laughs>